so our next speaker, fourth speaker, is John Caval. John comes to us again from Boulder, where he directs development projects for Coburn Partners. John will sh share some real-world examples of combining old and new ideas to create new kinds of housing developments. Please help me welcome John. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me tonight. And I do have a confession. Even though I'm from Boulder, I did drive my Suburban up here tonight. <laughs> so I apologize for that in advance that I didn't bring my plug-in car. And sometimes that happens. Plus, I was late. Um, well, it's great to be up here. We had the opportunity to work up in this community. And I just want to uh, say you've got a great planning staff and great council and uh, a lot of people that are willing to you know, help development progress and do the right thing. So it's a really great community to work in. And we feel pri privileged to have worked up here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about us and, and what we've done as far as projects um, and give you a little bit of background on stories and lessons learned, things like that. Um, so I'm with Coburn Development. Uh, we are based in Boulder. We also have an office up in Crested Butte, which gives us, gives us the mountain perspective. We have three disciplines under one roof. We do development, which basically we go out and put deals together and try to figure out how to develop a project, uh, do entitlements, things like that. Uh, we also do architecture, where we design our own projects. We also work for other people, and we do construction. What um, helps with this model is, is that we can vertically integrate and, and do projects in real time and see how things will evolve. So we have a really unique perspective and the ability for our construction team to really understand the real estate metrics, for our design team to understand how things get built and so on and so forth. So it's been a really great uh, model and I think it's a great way to build. I'm gonna jump uh, a little bit here to uh, uh, a small town in Italy and what intrigued me about this particular house is that this is a disposable house. And these houses were in a farm community where they were designed to be taken apart when the tax assessor came by. So I'm sure all of you have gotten your uh, assessments lately, and uh, we've gotten them in Boulder as well. And um, I just thought it was kind of interesting that, you know, that was an issue back then. So these are relatively small houses, and they were, if they didn't have a roof on them, they were considered part of the farm. So they would take these uh, stone roofs off, and they were easily stacked and unstacked. But then I was thinking, wow, these are beautiful. They don't build like this anymore. It's just shocking to me that they could you know, ever take that down. But it was kind of interesting. Um, so bringing it back to home here a little bit, um, this is a project we did in Boulder. It's called Iris Hollow. And when we um, initially bought this parcel, it was basically three farms in the middle of Boulder that was zoned in the county, or it was part of the county. So we had to go through an annexation process. And, you know, again, it was sort of this agricultural little pocket, and through that annexation process, we were able to create 70% uh, of the project as affordable housing, have a mix of unit types with condominiums, single-family homes, and a little bit, you can see the one-room schoolhouse there, which is a little daycare, and, and create some mixed-use um, environment. Behind us here in this, this was just sort of a ratty ditch and a, a back of a closed Kmart. Now it's this beautiful, you know, park area and things like that. So you can sort of see what... Can, can happen in a development area where this was sort of an underutilized corner and now um, it's home to you know 85 units, some affordable housing. This is um, just shows you sort of what we try to do to integrate product type, um, meaning that we had affordable housing units. This was our, we're really proud of this particular type of product where we created affordable housing where you had all four walls around you, you owned you know your, your land and you had a parking space, so on and so forth. And in the foreground is a market rate housing unit. So how do you integrate units so that they work together so that it's not, oh, there's the affordable housing project. And I think we were successful in that. Also trying to create pathways and connections. On the left is a uh, path within Iris Hollow, and then you've got sort of the classic Italian uh, pathway. So this isn't a new idea. It's been around for a long time, seems to work well. Bringing it back to Matera, Italy, you know, again, we talk about density a lot, and this is a very dense, uh, mountain, you know, started from cave dwellings and became this community. It's absolutely beautiful, rich, integrated, and, you know, talk about density, it's now people are coming to visit and check it out and live there again. Um, this is a site that we worked on. It was uh, the old steel yards, which was home to Boulder Steel. Um, the, pro the property was under contract to be sold to Home Depot. Boulder said we will never have a Home Depot in our town. We have one now. Um, and they wanted to see something different. So we had come up with a plan to, uh, to create an integrated mixed-use community. And we worked closely with the city of Boulder to create new zoning, new ideas, 
And just to give you a quick orientation, up here is basically all commercial, and then back here is residential. This is our only vertically integrated building, and we're still developing. We have a few parcels back there that we're still working on. Um, but this is essentially what it is today. The interesting thing is the properties on 30th Street, which is a really busy corridor, and people are like, who would ever want to live over there? And this is the first building that we built, and it's right on the corner, and it's a commercial building, and, and we had this whole market perception that people are like, well, I don't want to live in that, and they, they wouldn't even go into, we sort of did a great job building that barrier that people didn't even want to necessarily go into the neighborhood and see what kind of housing was going to be there and things like that, so it took a little bit of education. Um, you know, to get people fired up about living there. There was really no connection to, you know, there were services around it, but it was sort of an enclave within an industrial district. Um, this is what it looks like today. We've got a lot of housing types. It works really well. There's a good connection to the street, porches, um, you know, varying sizes and housing types. There is a 30% affordable housing component to it. Um, this is the only vertically integrated building, which I pointed out before. And what was interesting about this is we've got residential on the top, lofts, and then we've got workspaces below. So two things have happened, and that's what's interesting about the development perspective. You set out to, to do these projects, and you think how things are going to work, and then all of a sudden people start living there and working there, and things change. So the interesting thing to us is we thought we'd have trouble with the residential people wanting to live there, and those sold out right away. People love the units. They like the view. They like the, the vibe. The commercial people were really concerned about, well, am I going to have people complaining about if I want to work late, my music's loud, things like that. So that was one interesting phenomenon, and then we ended up ultimately selling it. We had a lot of people that made things and things like that, because it was a new zone called Industrial Main Street, which allowed for housing in an industrial area. What's happened because of market forces is the industrial guys and the makers, if you will, have been kind of pushed out, and now this is all office. Oh, whoop, I went a little too far. Um, sorry about that. So this is all kind of becoming office now. So we have a lot more people, a lot more parking needs, things like that um, happening in, in this particular area. So it's interesting how it's living. Um, another thing we, we hear a lot from municipalities is we want a market on every corner. So this was sort of a cute little market in Florence. Um, has you know, everything you can imagine in probably 500 square feet. But you know, on the right-hand side, this is you know, what it's adjacent to. Narrow street, full of cars tall buildings, things like that. I like it, I think it's exciting, but I think there's this perception that, oh, we want to market on every corner, we want these walkable neighborhoods. Um, you know, is, is the trade-off there, or is it, can you do it a little bit differently? Um, we've also had the opportunity to work a lot in downtown Boulder, so these are a few of the projects that we worked, um, have worked on, and what's been great about that is that the East End Corridor has been sort of this revitalization, even though there's established neighborhoods there. Um, you know, kind of working within the context of uh, sort of a renaissance, if you will, of, of a locals area of town and, and how neighborhoods work and how the interaction is going to work with uh, the services, the restaurants, the people who already live there. Um, this is one project that we did recently, and it's right at the corner of 15th and Pearl, which is at the sort of entry of the mall. Um, it's an old Goodyear building. You guys have a similar building on Mountain Avenue. Um, it's basically the same exact building, and this is what it looks like today. So we created a mixed-use project with 22 residential units um, and about 12,000 square feet of commercial on the first floor here. Um, we were really proud of this project because we did have to integrate within a historic district, so trying to set back uh, the building, make it pedestrian scale, bury the, the bricks and the window types, um, you know, make things kind of make sense from the patterns of the street um, that, that exist today. Um, and then we also really tried to create functional spaces, internal spaces that worked for retailers and things like that. The, the funny thing is, is I had so many solicitations from restaurants and my, my advice is that restaurants are great and love them, but they're really challenging in a mixed use building, especially residential. I, don't, I think people underestimate what goes on in a restaurant, the volume of, of trash and things like that, um, the wine bottles that have to get dumped at two in the morning and things like that. So it's something that you really have to think about when you're we're doing a project. Um, the other thing is, is this is one of the first condominium projects that took advantage of the solar credit directly to units and attached housing. So we have, um, we were able to create solar within directly to units, um, shading on the decks um, to help you know with um, solar less solar gain into the units, um, things like that. So most of the people that have solar panels in this project are getting a credit back every year. It's feeding back into the system. So we're really proud of that fact too. 
Uh, this is a shot of the Pantheon. Uh, the open window, rain gets in, sun gets in, everything seems to work. So um, it's sort of funny how solar is. And um, <clears throat> going north, uh, this is a project we worked in collaboration with um, the Bo uh, Boulder Housing Authority, which is Boulder Housing Partners. And this is another one of these sites where it was an old drive-in um, in North Boulder, and it was slated to go to Costco, and Boulder said, we're not going to have a Costco. So we don't have one. Everyone drives to Louisville to go to the Costco uh -huh. up there. Um, so what was interesting about this was this is actually the pattern of where the screen sat and then how all the cars fanned out. In the land planner, uh, Boulder Housing Partners hired another firm. We were one of five developers that worked in here, and we were part of the initial development team. Um, that put it together, but they wanted to honor that and I was like, I'm a grid and street and basic guy And I'm like, what are you talking about? You gotta you can't make this like this But it, it's actually I was wrong and it turned out really great. This park is phenomenal. It's all finished now You've got um, you know play structure and they show movies in the park and it works really well and it kind of gives it this nice sort of I don't know romantic curve in the in the street and mixes it up a little bit So it's been really successful um, this just sort of shows the process that we go in that because we are vertically integrated, we're able to conceptualize a project um, from very early on and actually get it built into reality. Um, this brings you into a little bit of the spaces and one of the things we tried to do in this project was cater to a live work artist um, type community and I think a lot of people talk about live work and love that idea and we ended up really getting running into challenges with how do you classify those units? Are they are they commercial, are they residential? And we ended up doing like sort of home occupancy. This is a studio down here, I don't know if you can see it, where basically it's her house, but it's, it's designed to work in, in context with the way that she um, you know, sells her work and produces her work. And what's interesting today is that we're running into um, new artists wanting to come in. I think people's idea of living near an artist is a, a watercolor painter who plays classical music very softly <laughs> instead of a welder or you know, someone who builds things. So I think you know, this idea of I want to be in our, our community is a little bit interesting. This is another project. This was an old mobile home park. Um, basically, the, the mobile homes were falling apart, needing to be renovated. We basically kept the same lot configuration, put small houses in, solar, tried to bring the community back together. I'm wrapping up here. That's about it. So thank you very much for having me. <laughs>